Insects provide ecosystem services that enhance and sustain human life. Some of these include pollination, as well as decomposition and biological control. In the next few minutes, we will talk about the roles and the diversity of all types of insects. You may be wondering why pollination is important. In fact, 80% of all flowering plant species are pollinated by animals, vertebrates, and mammals. But the main pollinators are insects. They provide us with a wide variety of food by pollinating many agricultural crops. Some famous pollinators include bees, wasps, and beetles. Bees make excellent pollinators because most of their life is spent searching for pollen, a source of protein that they will feed their offspring. When a bee lands on a flower, the hair all over the bee's body attract pollen grains to itself. A bee also has stiff hairs on the back of their legs that allow them to groom pollen into special pockets known as pollen sacs. They will then carry the pollen back to their nest. Many plants require this kind of pollen distribution, known as cross-pollination, in order to produce viable seeds. Some common pollinators that you may be familiar with include the bumblebee, carpenter bee, and honeybee. Honeybees are often kept in man-made hives by beekeepers and used to pollinate crops and other ornamental landscape plants. A beekeeper's job is to maintain the hive, collecting honey and other bee products such as honeycomb or wax. The honeycomb or wax is used by humans in cosmetics, to make candles, and for wood and leather treatment. For the bee, the honeycomb is where larvae is laid and where pollen and honey is stored. Remember, a honey beehive is made up of female workers, a female queen, and male drones. We will watch a few clips of honey bees at work. Wasps are also important pollinators. They are mainly predaceous, feeding on other small insects, but they can be seen gathered around flowers for two reasons. They drink flower nectar for quick energy while they hunt, and they use the flowers as a hunting ground for small insects that may be attracted there. There are several different types of wasps that you may be familiar with. This includes paper wasp, potter wasp, and thread-waisted wasp. Beetles are responsible for pollinating 88% of flowering plant species globally. They move from flower to flower, feeding on pollen, nectar, and other plant parts. Some common pollinating beetles include the tumbling flower beetle, blister beetle, and scarab beetle. Other pollinating insects include butterflies and moths, and flies such as the surfed fly, long-legged fly, and house and flesh flies. As you can see, insects act as pollinators, but they also act as biological control agents. Biological control is a component of an integrated pest management strategy. It is the reduction of pest populations by natural enemies or those insects that already occur in nature and typically involves an active human role. Biological control agents can include predators, parasitoids, and pathogens. By using biological control, one can reduce pesticide inputs 
or pesticide use throughout the environment. Just a few natural enemies that act as predators and can be found in a garden area include the lady beetle and lady beetle larva, the ground beetle, the praying mantis, and the stink bug. Also, arachnids act as predators. We will watch a short clip of the lady beetle larva and the lady beetle. Parasitoid is an organism that lives in or on a single host individual, ultimately killing that individual. Some examples of parasitoids include ichneumonid, raconid, and calcid wasp, and tachinid flies and others. Insects are susceptible to disease-causing organisms known as pathogens, and these pathogens can act as biological control agents. Some examples of pathogens include bacteria, viruses, fungi, and nematodes. Decomposition is a natural process and the breaking down of dead, decaying plant, animal, and insect matter. There are a variety of organisms that participate in decomposition and are known as decomposers and insects and other arthropods are just some of those. There are three different types of consumers that make up the food web. The first is primary or first level consumers that feed directly on the dead, decaying organic matter. This includes earthworms, slugs, blow and flesh flies, beetles, millipedes, and pill bugs. There are also secondary consumers or second level consumers which feed directly on primary consumers and their waste. An example of this would be springtails. The third level consumers or tertiary consumers feed on secondary and sometimes tertiary consumers. An example of this would be a centipede. Remember, decomposers are everywhere. They can be found in forests, along roadsides, or even in your own backyard. In fact, insect decomposers can be used in criminal investigation to determine time of death. This is referred to as forensic animology. Now we watch a few short clips of decomposers in action. seen, insects provide a variety of different functions to the ecosystem. This includes pollination, biological control, and decomposition. Insects are needed for human life and without them things would be a lot different. Thanks for watching.